What makes a roller coaster more than a ride? What makes you stand in line for hours to ride an experience that may only last two minutes? For some, it's the thrill and the rush of adrenaline, when just for a few moments you defy gravity and leave yourself to the whim of engineering and physics. The biggest, the fastest, the tallest, and the longest. These used to be the only things that mattered to theme parks. But as the world became more connected, and as entertainment evolved, theme parks turned to narrative. To create experiences that, paired with a ride to thrill the senses, would create an unforgettable adventure. Coasters and rides alike have fandoms now, with stories that, while they may have no beginning, middle, or end, still capture the attention and excite the imagination. In this series, we'll look at the story not of the coaster, but the story with the coaster. And hopefully, you'll find a story you want to know more about. For some things, there is no rational explanation. Welcome to Coaster Lore. The year is 1997, and something odd is going on at Alton Towers in Staffordshire. Fantasy World was gone, so were the rides, and in their place, a pit was forming. It was here that Oblivion's story started. Oblivion was a secret weapon, the fourth one, in fact, and the secret aspect was tightly held by Alton. During the 1997 season, the area was patrolled by a security guard, one whose bosses were not known, the only clue being the odd symbol on his sleeve. That information is classified. Please clear the area. Operative 242 to security 3. Sector 4. Imminent. Referred to as Operative 242, he was played by at least two different staff members, Robert Bagnell and one staff member simply known as Joe in the Alton Magic documentary. He was instructed not to talk to the guests and to reveal no information about the unnamed ride. The X Sector was forming and a story was unfolding. Operative 242 was just the first of many characters that Alton made to promote the ride. Soon the secret project had a name. Oblivion. Oblivion, by definition, is the state of being forgotten, of disappearing from the face of the earth. But uh, oblivion is the state of being forgotten, and when you drop off that edge, you'll feel very much like uh, you're about to drop into this an enor enormous hole uh, and you're into the state of being forgotten at a terrifying rapid pace, which, uh, which should get a few people going. The marketing for Oblivion was one of the biggest campaigns ever taken on by the Towers, and the ad for it is infamous, and helped create the atmosphere for the ride before a guest even stepped into the park. The ad was created by J. Walter Thompson, a marketing firm that's still in business to this day. I really dig the storyboard images that they created for the ad. From what I can see, two versions of the ad were pitched, with the ad that we see today being largely unchanged from the version that was produced. The characters in this ad, of course, have no names or any real bearing on the coaster's overall story, but they don't need to be. They're just another piece of the puzzle. One of the first things guests encounter about Oblivion, and one of its most infamous aspects, are the queue line videos. The ride was open, but Alton didn't let up on its campaign for the ride being a spine-tingling experience. You have been designated for Oblivion. The decision to come here was not your own. It was ours. This character is called the Lord of Darkness, though I can't find where the name of this character was originally coined, as it does not appear in the video. I have found some suggestions that he was called this name in production, but it's unknown, to me at least, how this name became public knowledge. There's also a secondary character in these videos, the Lord of Light, and it is implied that he and the Lord of Darkness are two sides of the same coin, perhaps even inhibiting the same body. This ride is perfectly safe. Everything has been designed for your comfort and enjoyment. If this ride is so safe, why is it called Oblivion? Relax. Sit back and enjoy the experience. Don't listen to him! 
What happens when the ride goes underground? Have you ever seen anyone who's actually survived it and come out the other side? How do we know? How do we know that some people haven't disappeared? Don't believe him! He's trying to lull you into a false sense of security! Just stay calm. These videos were a large part of what made the ride so thrilling, winding you up before you're even close to the harness. The vortex motif is brought up in these videos, suggesting the possibility that once you go down, once you enter oblivion, you may not come back out. We interrupt the proceedings to bring you an oblivion report. A few moments ago, we were informed that a ride car has disappeared. Ride car 2 began its descent and doesn't appear to have come out of the other side. What is baffling experts is that there is no crash scene. There is no car. There are no survivors. There is... nothing. This video was actually used very rarely, and you really only got the chance to see it if the ride broke down, or if you were in the cafe. The Lord of Darkness was played by Rennie... Alright, hang on a minute, I wanna make sure I say this right. Rennie Kuprinsky, who was an accomplished actor and stuntman, and it was directed by Mark Nuttall Phil Taylor. Yes, nailed it! Now we get to the weird stuff. In the summer of 1999, Alton Towers had something called The Summer Spectacular, a water show based on the lake. The show took place on a stage in the center of the water and, most baffling of all, told a tale that contradicted almost every single piece of Oblivion's established lore. The many stunts used boats and amphibious vehicles were carried out by the Royal Marine Display Team. That's right, they got the frickin' Royal Navy to participate in their boat show. Only one video of the show exists on the internet that I could find. Is there no escaping the dark force of the Oblivion Master? We must resist him at all costs! He must never be allowed to take this water purification plant, or he will force us all out into the wilderness, into the radioactive swamps! A comic version of the show was also published in Towers Times in 1999, which gives a better glimpse at the weird storyline of this show, with the Oblivion Master looking really like Cobra Commander. And now, a dramatic reading of the Oblivion Boat Show comic. The story so far. This is the monstrous Oblivion Master's target, the world's only drinking water plant. The plant is defended by a ragtag colony of rebels who must save it to guarantee the future of mankind. We'll fight to save mankind! They are under constant attack from the Master's ruthless troops, including the jet ski riding elite guards and their machine guns. <laughs> rebels also have to face the might of the Master's deadly gas powered guns mounted on his speedy, rigid raiders. We'll blow you away with our guns! Now, if we get to you first! <laughs> this is so ridiculous. This is so ridiculous. The attacker's war weapons include three flame-throwing amphibious vehicles manned by the Master's daring but wicked troops. And we'll burn you out of your ivory tower. The Rebels' only defense against the ever-present jet bikes is water cannon. Is water cannon. The Master's cunning commandos are now attacking the Rebels' position on overhead ropes. When the two armies come face to face, the rebels fight with courage, but the stormtroopers reveal superhuman strength. Take that! We can fight too, you know! Soon, the valiant rebels are overwhelmed, and the stormtroopers mock the enemies in a show of force. You'll never de defeat the Oblivion Master! Then it seems that all is over, as the evil Oblivion Master storms the tower and threatens the rebel leader! Now I have captured your leader! Surrender, or I will send her to Oblivion! What's this? We're saved! Thank heavens for our brave airmen. The Oblivion Master is forced to flee while the Rebels celebrate their daring last-minute victory. We did it. We beat the forces of evil. As for the audience, they're still holding their breath after a close encounter they'll never forget. And we had a great time. Three cheers for the Rebels. <laughs> Oh, this is so ridiculous that I love it! <laughs> to recap, a ride which takes place in a secret military facility run by the Lord of Darkness also has a Mad Max storyline containing a water purification plant and the Cobra Commander. Is this really what they did? This is really what Alton did. They, they, made, a, they made a boat show and it only ran for two weeks. Okay, yeah, okay. 
In 2013, the face of Oblivion was changed forever when it gained a new neighbor, the Smiler. With it, the X Sector gained a new owner, the Ministry of Joy. This organization will mostly be covered in future Coaster Lore episodes. Ownership of the X Sector was turned over to the Ministry of Joy starting in 2013. Alton confirmed that the Lord of Darkness has indeed partnered up with the Ministry of Joy to aid in their experiments on the website. That must have been an ironclad contract. At this time, Oblivion, which was 15 years old, got a fresh coat of paint, a similar dark gray to its grinning neighbor. In my research for this video, I came across a coaster that looked familiar. So eerily similar that it was impossible not to investigate. In Italy, on the other side of Europe, is another Oblivion. This one, a gleaming white that almost glows in the bright sunlight. Could this be the Lord of Light's version of Oblivion? Perhaps. What we do know is Oblivion does have a sister coaster in Oblivion, the Black Hole, located in Gardaland in northeastern Italy. The park is run by the same company as Altern Towers, Merlin Entertainment, and is even manufactured by the same company, B&M. This ride has more of a space theme, with an incredible queue and a breathtaking set that shows a black hole wreaking havoc on the ride. I haven't been able to find any translations for the sparse videos that are in the queue, but it's safe to assume that the Lord of Darkness has nothing to do with this ride, and seems to have an entirely separate lore from the Oblivion located in England. The ride's secondary title, The Black Hole, is widely believed to be a reference to THE Black Hole, a ride at Alton Towers that the Smiler replaced. Oblivion still operates to this day, and its thrills have long been topped in scale and thrill, but to this day, Oblivion is loved. It, and the other rides around the world like it, are a testament to the thrill of story. Humans will innately seek narrative. We love being told stories, and we love being part of them even more. Even if that role in the story is hapless government experiment lab rat. Thank you so much for watching the first episode of Coaster Lore. I really hope you liked it. Shout out to my Coaster Lore agents and an extra huge special thanks to the channels who allowed me to use their footage. SoCal Attractions 360 and Theme Parks Worldwide, this video wouldn't be possible without you. And thank you for taking a chance on a startup channel like me and giving me permission to use your footage. Please check out their channels if you have the chance. Also, another shout out to my friends who have supported me through all of this madness. I'm very excited about this project, and if you have a suggestion for a coaster you would like covered in this series, drop it in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode.